To love Muni is to love buses. Uh, it is the heart of our transportation system and I think investing in the bus system and improving the bus system is sort of a no-brainer. It's been really a transformative period over the last five or six years for us. We have new buses, we're getting new light rail vehicles. We passed a bond in 2014 that gave us a half a billion for infrastructure. I have the pleasure or the opportunity to oversee all of the day-to-day -day operations of our bus and rail network. It's one of the most extensive systems in North America. It's one of the most heavily traveled. In 2013, the mayor called for the creation of a transportation task force to look at the needs of the transportation system between now and 2030 so that we could take concrete steps towards meeting those needs. It was a system-wide program called Muni Forward, and it was the first real comprehensive look at the entire network, not just a couple of lines in a few hours. We looked at the system top to bottom. The voters passed a general obligation bond in 2014 that puts $500 million towards the system's state of good repair. If you look down, you'll see the red lanes those have been extensive throughout some key corridors, major corridors in the city for transit. It signals to the cars and even to the bicyclists that this is for the bus only, and in some cases bus and taxi. And that's made a huge difference. Cars in general do keep off of it, which means that buses don't have to swerve. There are bright, cheerful red carpets that call out the importance of the transportation system and the bus riders in particular. And on the streets where we've done it, we made noticeable improvements in the performance of the buses. We're in the process of building out an entire network. Eventually there will be 33 miles of red lanes throughout the city. A little over three years ago now we became the first major system to go to what's called all-door boarding. We did an, a public outreach campaign and the single biggest delay we found was the revenue transaction. And what outdoor boarding is, is it's when you're able to get on with buses in the front and the back. And there's a lot of concern with front and back because we were concerned that fare evasion was going to happen more frequently, but in fact we've had less fare evasion since outdoor boarding. The buses run more smoothly and we're able to get people to their destinations faster. They're getting the clipper card readers for all of the doors. It's accelerated people getting on and off of the bus and it's prioritized the needs and the, and the comfort of the riders. Traditionally with transit systems, what you have is a, they're not the most flexible in the world. Generally, they focus their lines in going to or from downtown. And what we did with Muni Ford over a period of years was we've created a rapid network where we have used tactics like consolidating stops. And that's been in effect. It's working on a number of lines. To do it required funding. So it's not just moving the bus stops, it's also prioritizing, giving the buses signal priority and making those investments to make that standard stopping work. We have the rapid network, which includes 11 lines. And what we're doing with those is we re reduce some stops and that in turn has helped us speed up the service, if you will, and reduce the travel time. And that's a concept that we're continuing to expand on. We've increased the service overall in an already rich service environment by over 10%. And that's included not just peak period service, but we've connected different areas of the city. We've expanded dramatically by some 40% our OWL or overnight network. The more people on the buses, the more people walking, the more people that are not in cars, the more people that we can have in San Francisco and be a thriving, wonderful 21st century city.